All right, in this lesson, we are gonna be talking about the lower of cost or market net realizable value. They all kind of scramble together, but what we're really talking about is the lower of cost or market. So let's get started here by kind of just giving you some background on why we're even talking about this, and then we'll show you kind of an example that goes along with the lower of cost or market. So some basics here is that inventory values can fall over time, especially for items that are subject to stiff competition or the life cycle of the product line declines. So as the life cycle of the product declines, the value of it, what we could literally get from the market starts to decline. And hopefully it's not gonna decline past its cost, what it costs us to make or buy, but it does happen, okay? So because inventory values could fall below the cost, it it, we incurred to acquire it, US GAAP requires that a revaluation of the inventory's value in the company's books when the inventory value falls below its cost. So what we're saying here is, you know, um, and I'll use my space here to kind of give you an example of this. So what we're saying here is, let's say it, uh, we buy uh, something for uh, $10 and we sell it for 20. So there's nothing wrong with that. We bought it for 10, we're selling it for 20. But over time, let's assume that because of stiff competition, we can't get $20 anymore because a competitor is charging $8. So they're charging $8, nobody's buying ours. So the only way that we can sell ours is to meet or beat that $8. So we decide that we can only get $8 for it based on the market's perception of our product. So now that our inventory is worth on the market $8. So notice that my market price has gone below what it cost me to acquire. It cost me $10 to acquire, but I can only sell it for $8. So that's the situation that we have here. So in the reevaluation, the inventory may be written down to its lower value. So in this case, we may need to lower it from $10 to $8 in our books because that's all it's really worth at the end of the day. So we're gonna to have to take a $2 loss on each item that we own. We call this the valuation, we call this valuation the lower of cost or market net realizable value. So if you hear lower of cost or market, what we're doing is we're doing an inventory valuation and we're gonna to have to make a change because of the decrease in the value of that inventory. Now some mechanics on how we actually do this, uh, the first thing that we need to do is to figure out what the market value of that inventory is. Oftentimes we're gonna give it to you, but you are gonna have to figure out what is that product worth in the market. Then the second step here is we're gonna take the market, va the market value, uh, or actually step back here. What is the market value? The market value is the cost to replace the inventory in the current market minus replacement cost. So what does it cost to replace the inventory in the current market? market. So we call that the replacement cost. What does it cost to replace that good? That would be the market price. All right. So once we figure out the market value, we then apply the lower of either the market or our cost. Now, if the market is above our cost, we don't have to do anything. We don't have a loss. We don't have a reevaluation. However, if the market is less than what we paid for it, the cost, then we're gonna to have to write down our inventory from cost to the lower market value. So the lower of the two, okay? So the cost of the inventory is then written off in my books currently, okay? Now, if the market is higher than the cost than the inventory, there is no impairment and you do not need to do anything else. However, if the market value is lower than the cost, then a write down is necessary and a journal is necessary to reduce the inventory in our books by the amount of the difference in the cost and market valuation, okay? So let's go through an example here and show you kind of what I would do in this situation. So company A is preparing their annual financial statement dated December 31st, 20X1. Ending inventory is presently recorded at its total cost of 5,465. So all of our inventory right now is in our books for 5,465. Information about its inventory item is as follows. So we've got a breakdown of all the information right down here. And it's asking us to compute the lower of cost or net realizable 
equal value, write down per unit and in total for each item in the table. Also com compute the total overall write down for all items and prepare the journal entry for the write down. So what it wants us to do is if we have a situation where the cost is above the market value, we need to figure that out for each product. Once we've done that, then we need to add all of those differences together to come up with the entire amount that needs to be written off. The third thing, we're gonna actually write it off with a journal entry. So um, these are the steps that I would solve this problem. So step number one is we're gonna calculate the total inventory amount today. Now I know this was already given to us in the problem, but we want to actually like break it down here so that when we start calculating later on how much loss we incur, we have these numbers up front. So to do this, we're gonna multiply the quantity on hand times the cost we incurred to acquire this item. So 20 times 12 is $240. 75 times 40 is 3,000. 35 times 55 is 1925. And 10 times 30 is 300. If we add all of those up, we get 54.65. So our total inventory is 5,465 and we've broken it by each one of these. So we want that because that's gonna help us understand uh, what our losses are at the end of the day for each item. All right, so that's step number one, pretty easy. Step number two here is we're gonna obtain the lower of cost or market. So this is how I would like to do it, is we've got all of our products, we have the quantity on hand, and then we have the unit cost when acquired under FIFO, so this would be our cost and then our year end values this would be market so what we're going to do is we're going to choose the lower of the two so product a which one's lower cost or market well cost is twelve dollars so the lower of cost or market is twelve dollars which also means we're not going to make an adjustment here because the lower of cost or market is still the cost product b we've got 75 units our cost was $40, but the market is saying it's only worth 38. Therefore, we're gonna use the lower of cost or market. In this case, we're gonna use market, so 38, which means we're gonna to have to make an adjustment here because we've reduced the inventory value to market value rather than leaving it at cost. Product C, we have 35 units. Uh, it costs us 55, but the market says it's only worth 50. So we're gonna take the lower of the two, in this case, 50. And again, adjustments gonna have to be made here. And then product D, we have 10 units. It costs us 30. Its market value right now is 35. So in this case, we're gonna take the lower of the cost or market, in this case, cost, and therefore 35. So we're not gonna make an adjustment there. So again, notice how I in quickly kind of decided, okay, which one we're gonna to have to make an adjustment, which one we don't based on the lower of cost or market. If I pick market, that means we're gonna to have to make an adjustment soon enough. All right, so that's step number two. In step number three here, we're gonna calculate the loss per product. Now, I have given you the answers here. Um, don't really know why, but I've given you the answers probably because I just didn't delete them when I made this. Oh, well. So notice here, we're gonna to have to make an adjustment for B and C. So notice what I have here is, notice in column three, I have the total inventory cost. In this case, 243,000, 1925, and 30. Now, I only need to calculate the difference if we have to make an adjustment, meaning that we had a market value rather than the fair, uh, rather than the cost. So notice that I calculated a lower of cost of market for B and C because those are what's gonna give us a difference. So in this case, $38 times 75, so $38 was the market value times 70, the number of 75, number of the units, gives us 2,850. Well, because it's now worth 2,850 and we had it in our books for 3,000, we're incurring a loss of 150 bucks on product B. So $150 because of the reduction in its market value. Then in product C, we have 35 units. Uh, we purchased them for 1,925, but the market value has gone down. So to calculate what it's worth in the market, we take $50, which is what we said was its worth in the market, and multiply it by 35 units, that would give us $1,750. That would mean that our product C decreased by $175 based on the market 
price. So product C, the loss would be 175. So our total loss, if we add up the last column, is $325. So kind of hitting two uh, birds with one stone here, we have a product B loss of 150, a product C loss of 175, and total loss of 325. Those are the two big things that the question was asking for. The next one is the journal entry. Now, some would say, well, could I do this for A and D as well? Sure, you could do that. So right now, we said that we use the lower of cost or market, we use cost for product A, so we did 20 times $12 a piece, equals $240. Well, $240 minus $240 is zero, so no loss there. For the product D, we had 10 units. Multiply that by $30 a unit gives us 300. 300 minus 300 is zero. So we could have done the whole table, but in this case, I only did the parts that I knew that we're gonna have to make an adjustment. Why? Because we chose market instead of cost, so we have a write down. All right, time to do the journal entry here. So what would the journal entry be? Well, the journal entry would be, would be something a little bit unique, or at least it's not that unique. You actually know what the journal entry is. So the journal entry that we're gonna make to write down our inventory is first, we gotta write down the inventory. So we have to decrease the inventory's value. To decrease the inventory, we've gotta credit that account. So we're gonna credit inventory by decreasing it $325. So we're going to credit inventory 325. A decrease in inventory is a uh, asset. Assets that decrease is a credit. Now the question is, what do we debit? So this is a little controversial, but the one account that we're going to use for debiting it is going to be cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. And we're going to do that at 325. Now, a lot of students often ask, why is it cost of goods sold? Why don't it's like a valuation expense or something like that? Well, the reason why it's cost of goods sold is really it's the cost of doing business. You know, we're going to take the risk on that the market value might go down and it's just the cost of doing business because the alternative is that we don't have any inventory or we keep so little inventory that when we sell out, we're missing sales. So we have to buy more than we need because we just never know when a customer wants to buy it. And we don't want to not have it in stock when a customer does want to buy it. So we're going to take the risk that the value of it's going to go lower than what we purchased it at for. And that's just what happened. So the reason why we debited cost of goods sold is it's the cost of doing business. It's just what we have to pay in order for us to make sure that we have a thriving business making money. So debit cost of goods sold, credit inventory, even though no inventory went out and no inventory went in. So that is a look at the lower of cost or market, the net realizable value. The key kind of takeaways here is we're gonna line up all of the costs and we're gonna line up all of the market values. We're gonna take the lower of the two, and if the lower happens to be market, we're gonna have a loss on that product. If the lower one has to be happens to be cost, then we don't need to do anything because we're not gonna be changing the valuation. So that's what we're gonna be looking at here in the lower of cost or market. So hope you enjoyed this lesson, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patricklymsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.